Good morning. Welcome to the sunrise stroll and chat. And there's great news this morning. Our volunteers here at Magdala have a new baby. Uh, former volunteers, uh, Carlos and Rachel. Rachel was the coordinator of the volunteers. And a new baby was born yesterday in Colorado. And her name is Carol Magdalena. <laughs> So this is a, a great joy and we are thrilled for them. They were very generous, worked many years here. First of all, as volunteers, they actually met when uh, I think Rachel was leaving and Carlos had arrived and somehow the Lord gave them that spark. They were also the first wedding ever to take place here in Magdala uh, at the boat altar. So many others have in the meantime, especially local Christians come here to have their weddings. Arab Christians, Melkites, Catholics and others. We actually had an evangelical couple, was the last one that was here um, how recently ago, maybe two months ago, towards the end of the first lockdown. So they got married here at the boat altar inside of Duke and Alton. I don't know if you can make out the boat inside the window. And they had the joy of their marriage here. So this was on the 1st of August, one of the hottest days ever, 52 degrees Celsius. <laughs> 52 degrees Celsius, so divided by 5, so that's 10 and a half approximately, multiplied by 9, that's about 94, and then add 32, 96, uh, 126 degrees. <laughs> Amazing, it was incredibly hot. I wasn't here, I was on a promotion trip in the States for the Holy Land, and Father Juan says one of the warmest days of his life. Well, anyway, they have the great news of a new baby girl, Carol Magdalena. And their lives are very marked here. And all of our lives in the Holy Land when we were working here, even when we were here just for a week of pilgrimage, aren't our lives so marked by the Holy Land? And to have the joy of this new life. So we raise up a prayer of gratitude to God for Carol Magdalena and for Rachel. Thank God she said everything went beautifully. I just heard the message before starting the Instagram post uh, 15, 20 minutes ago. I couldn't resist hearing that because we were all expecting the news. We were praying yesterday. So people, we are here at this beautiful location, enjoying this incredible scene and the good news of life. It's a new day. Every day is a great gift. So today you weren't born, but today is a new day. Let's go down here to the water edge. It's very nice. I was here with the Instagram a few moments ago. Our tent friend has left some traces of his presence but very little clean basically but he probably left that little thing there for somebody else to come so here we are at this beautiful scene
Oh, there we have them. See how green they are? There were lots of them. They're really multiplying. They're a threat to the other species. They're an invading threat. threat. So by calling them a squadron originally, I wasn't far off the mark. They'll probably be around again because they come a few times. So let me go and get a better position. They love coming close to the water here. And I'm going to come up here to see if they'll be around again in a few minutes. If we catch them. Obviously we're close to sunrise now. I want to get another spot as well for another joy. So this could be a good spot for now actually. So we'll have we'll keep an eye on the window. And we'll be able to keep an eye on these birds, hopefully, if we hear them coming. Just be ready for a little sudden jerk, okay? Because they don't give me much time. They're coming at high speed. I'm happy that many of you have uh, begun reading uh, Fratelli Tutti. Got quite a number of posts. And I have to apologize. Yesterday I neglected to put the link on the Facebook page post of the Sunrise Stroll and Chat. But I did actually put it from the very beginning on the YouTube. But thanks to one of you, then I realized uh, it wasn't posted. So I posted it yesterday afternoon here in Magdala on the Facebook chat. So this document is amazing i'm up to number number 70 71 and i just love it i'm listening to it a little bit as i'm doing some other things so i just uh, select uh, the next set of numbers i want to hear and press speak and then it talks to me the funny thing is that when it's mentioning the quotes of the gospel it calls them minutes and seconds but that's the computer so we have understanding for those things. Oops, that wasn't intentional. Hello there. <laughs> oh, there's the sun. There's the sun. You got the sunrise right here, all for you. This beautiful gift today. God bless you today. It's just what you want to say in a day like this. We are being so blessed with the gift of life. This new little baby, Carol. Magdalena and each of us given a new day. There we have them but they're on the other side of us. So I am, I'm going to go over to this other spot here now and then I might have a better chance to catch them. We're made for beauty, people. We appreciate beauty. And it can be very tiny little realities that are filled with beauty, like we are little beloved flowers here that are considered weeds by most people. 
and every one of these is a work of beauty and a work of extraordinary engineering. A storm can blow here and these little petals continue. They're standing up to a storm. I see somebody is mentioning storms there that aren't so nice, that cause lots of damage. So we pray for all the people in St. Charles in Louisiana. So people, there's a very beautiful reading this morning. Uh, really beautiful. And it's very nice to be here for that. Wow, it's locked. I'm locked out here. So I have to try and refresh the screen to get it for you. But you remember the background, how so often the disciples were looking for Jesus in the early morning and they didn't find him. So they got intrigued uh, when they discovered that he was out praying. One night, another night, another night. And so at one point then, this is how the Luke chapter 11 starts today, verse 1. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. And this version in Luke's Gospel is a little shorter than the version in Matthew's Gospel. And it's interesting because it, it gives us a more, let's say, bare bones, our Father. So we can see that these were absolutely essential to you. Know? But the first one is, Father, hallowed be your name. Now who can complain about this prayer? Father, may your name be held holy. Your kingdom come. We're tired of lots of different kingdoms and power brokers on this earth. Many times wounded and hurt. Many times mismanaged. May your kingdom come. We're tired of playing king ourselves in our own little fiefdom. May your kingdom come. And the next petition is, give us each day our daily bread. And the next one is, forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us. Wouldn't that be wonderful if we would do this? forgive the others who are in debt to us how much peace comes from that from that from, from that action peace for ourselves by not forgiving the other person mightn't even know or might know but the person that really knows is myself because I forgive and as long as I don't forgive I'm in great unrest, great sadness, great tension. And to forgive means to enter into an area of peace. It's like taking some poison out of my system. It's like taking a stone out of my shoe. 
when I forgive. So the first beneficiary of forgiveness is the one who forgives. And do not subject us to the final test. And yet God strengthens so many for the final test. I think of the martyrs. The psalm today is go out to all the world and tell the good news. You know, when we just heard that baby was born, we have to share it. <laughs> Carlos and Rachel have their baby. Wow. What a blessing for them. And they were such wonderful, generous volunteers here at Magdala. And the whole family goes electric when a baby is born. Everybody tells everybody. Tell the good news. And that's why when I started reading Fratelli Tutti, I had to tell you uh, it was good. And it's an incredibly beautiful document. One of the beautiful things about it is that it doesn't take the side of one political party or lobby. It takes the side of the dignity of the human being and hopefully become a basis for many very conflicting sides to come together and say, how can we serve the most needy? How can we serve the most vulnerable? How can we advance our common interests? We need to pray a lot for that for the opening up of the heart of all those in leadership and who have positions of power, who are looking for positions of power, that they use this power to serve the others, to serve the needy, to serve those significant interests of the people for whom they were asked to represent them in public issues. So I'm going to leave the link, since I didn't post on time yesterday, I leave it in the, in the post today, the link for Fratelli Tutti. Thank you so much for joining us today. We keep you very much in our prayers. And we ask you for the same. I see a question here. Which Bible story is your favorite? Wow. Wow. I don't know how to answer that question because uh, there are so many incredible I think the whole reality of scripture the whole reality of of the whole story you know from the first wedding to the last wedding from Adam and Eve in 
chapter 1 and 2 of Genesis to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And it's all wrapped by these two big marriage moments. They're kind of the book ending and giving us a key to understand the whole of Scripture. And imagine that it was written over hundreds and hundreds of years, really thousands of years, in terms of the formation of that whole story. And so many people intervened in the telling of the story. And yet it has an incredible unity. And it's one story because there's one very big author behind it all. So the whole phenomenon of sacred scripture is, is I find fascinating. And that's why I love that letter from the 30th of September, the apostolic letter, on the occasion of the 1600th anniversary of the death of St. Jerome, about how scripture just molded that man and how he bequeathed such a legacy to humanity in his extraordinarily simple, direct translation into the vernacular of the time, the Latin language. From, he did it from the original Greek and Hebrew. And, and the title of the letter is so beautiful. Love for sacred, loving attachment, loving a, a, a love for the sacred scripture. And how uh, this affection, it's like, uh, uh, it's a loving affection. It's, it's um, how this uh, opens the heart for trans sacred scripture transforming us. So I think this is, uh, I had this is my answer. And every story is so precious. And even the stories of human misery but being touched in by mercy from heaven. This has to be um, uh, just some of the most magnificent, the magnificent uh, experience we have. You know, they say that to look at God's creation, God reveals his greatness, his power, his strength, his beauty. But to look at the mystery of redemption, his mercy, it just goes way beyond the extraordinary goodness of God that's revealed in creation. And so then it's a whole story. It's, it's a story from Adam and Eve to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Um, I don't know what else to answer, how to answer that question. By the way, your question also reminded me of something that I often wanted to mention. If you'd like to treat certain subjects, you can send me um, a question either privately on on the messenger uh, or uh, you have the you even have my whatsapp number there so you can uh, send me a question or a message or an issue that you'd like to have addressed <coughs> and we'll do our best to do is uh, do different ones uh, God willing um, <coughs> it can be another element of this sunrise stroll and chat delighted to do that And also for you to provide your own comments to things. Uh, I love the good morning comments, hello comments, I'm here comment. But many times people are also putting in something uh, very much more. There's a little bird here. Oh, just ran away from me. It's still over there. It has, it's such so colorful. And he was perched right here beside me. I was going to turn the camera over, but it's too far away now to try and even focus. People, God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning. And we are thrilled with the gifts the Lord gives us. And we continue to pray, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. May your name be held holy. Thank you, people. See you later, alligators.